Before the advent of microprocessors, transistors, and even vacuum tubes came the relay. A relay computer's speed is limited by the physical movement needed within each electromechanical relay. But what they lack in speed, they make up for with their charming cadence of clicking and clacking. I've set up this test rig to demonstrate some considerations for the speed of a relay computer. I'll start over here with the Arduino knockoff, and this is just acting as a simple clock that I can quickly adjust in this code here to easily play around with the different clock speeds. And moving over to the right, we'll start with this chip down here, which is a Darlington array, and I'm just using it as a driver between the Arduino and the relays, and it's just used to give us a current boost and also protects the sensitive Arduino I.O. pins. And above that, we have these three relays. The first one is driven directly from the clock signal that I can enable using this momentary button down here. And then these top two relays are connected in series using the normally open pins, but we'll go into these ones a bit later. Now a good place to start with any component is the datasheet. And since we're talking about speed, We'll jump to this section that talks about the operate and release times for this relay. The operate time refers to the time it takes between the coil being energized and when a voltage can be passed from the common pin to the normally open pin on the relay. And according to this sheet, it should take 6 milliseconds. So let's test that out. I've connected a probe to the clock input line and then another probe to the normally open pin on the first relay as well as a 5 volt supply to the common pin. Now, I'll set the clock speed to 50 milliseconds, upload that to the Arduino, and then I can press this button to capture it on the scope. So, yeah, I'll just shift that over a bit, and we can see that the bottom signal represents the clock energizing the relay coil, and the one above it represents the first relay's normally open pin. And with the scope division set to five milliseconds, we can see that the normally open pin signal going high right around the six milliseconds after the coil is energized. And then we're seeing the release occurring, I'd say around three to four milliseconds once the coil is de-energized. So these values are pretty much matching the data sheet for this relay. So let's set the clock cycle to 20 milliseconds. And when we press the button again, we see a valid looking signal, albeit with a more compressed pattern. The 20 millisecond rate output signals seem to look okay, but we now have to keep in mind that in a relay computer, there are many relays that are interconnected. In these cases, the first relay may only need 6 milliseconds to operate, but we must also add the time needed for the propagation of these signals to activate other relays as part of a larger circuit. So let's demonstrate this now by hooking up the second probe to the normally open pin on the second relay. And with the clock still set to 20 milliseconds, we now see that the output is completely out of sync with the original coil activation on the first relay. And if we take this propagation just one step further by moving up to the third relay in this chain, we just end up with an unusable output signal. And this is because the secondary relay's output was under the minimum six milliseconds needed for the third relay to perform a complete operation. Looking back at our trusty data sheet, we see a section about life expectancy. And since relays have moving parts, they will wear out quicker than their more modern solid state counterparts. Mechanical life refers to the number of times the armatures can physically switch from the normally closed to the normally open and back again. And the electrical life refers to the number of operations a relay can perform when actively switching a load. And this is measured differently than the mechanical life because although the internal armatures are fairly sturdy, it's the contacts that can wear down or corrode more quickly due to the arcing that occurs 
when these contacts are opened or closed. Now at first glance, these numbers look rather impressive, with 10 million mechanical operations and 100,000 electrical ones. But let's translate these numbers into how much time a relay would last running at different clock speeds. We'll start with the big one, which is 10 million mechanical operations. And at one hertz or one cycle per second, that's 10 million seconds, which rounds up to over 166,000 minutes, or just under 3,000 hours. And since we're not using the relay computer every day, more like a couple of hours on the weekends, this would give us around 1,400 weeks, or 26 years, so not bad at all. But let's move on to the lower number of the two. So with 100,000 electrical operations at a clock speed of 1 hertz, we get 100,000 seconds, which is just over 1,600 minutes, or 27 hours. And that's not a very long lifespan at all. And if we quickly do these same calculations with the sort of clock speeds we'd want to run the computer at, it gets downright demoralizing. Now to make myself feel a bit better, I considered that these ratings were based on higher voltages and currents, which predictably would cause more wear and tear on the internal contacts. But the reality is, I really don't know how long these relays will last, and the only way to be sure is to put them to the test. I'll just run the clock at a healthy 10 hertz, and using just a bit more math, that equates to around 2 hours and 47 minutes, and that's not too long of a wait. At the start of the test, the relay was operating at around 6 to 7 milliseconds. Well, after the test, the contacts seem fine, but the operating speed seems to have slowed slightly, but not really enough to cause any issues just yet. One final note is that the datasheet does show a maximum operating frequency, which on the mechanical side equates to 5 Hz. And this is about as fast as I would run this relay computer anyway. Although, knowing me, I'll still be tempted to run turbo mode now and again, just for fun. And finally, a few have commented about using sockets for the relays. And after doing this exercise, I tend to agree that sockets are not a bad idea. I do use sockets on the prototype board, and I do notice that the relays seem to get loose over time. And I'm not sure if this is because of the physical clicking of the relays, but I'll figure that out. I had a lot of fun doing this video, and you may have guessed by now that I'm not a professional electronics engineer by trade. I'm a hobbyist at best, fumbling his way through the build of a relay computer. This exercise really got me to dive in and think a lot more about how these little guys actually work and what their limitations are. I know that their lifespan is not the longest by far, but to me, that's not what this is all about. I'm just having a ton of fun with this project. And as always, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section about relays, their lifespan, probably some math uh, mistakes I made in the video, who knows. Either way, would love to hear from you on this and want to take this opportunity as always to thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.